Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ryan Brawley, and today we have the Lego Castle Fantasy Era Drawbridge Defense set number 7078. This set has 335 pieces. It released in June of 2009 and expired a year later in July of 2010. This set retailed for $39.99 back then, and you can expect this set to be worth roughly around $300 sealed and about $200, $150 for a used copy. Quite an expensive set and quite expensive jump for many of reasons. This set has a lot of detail, comes with a great selection of minifigures including this Golden Knight and the Queen. It has a bunch of great play features and also belongs to the really famous brand Lego Castle Fantasy Era. I had this set in my collection since I was 9 years old. I got it during Christmas time. I got it from my mom mom and for the past decade has been destroyed in my collection and I decided to build it up and review it for you guys. This is among my favorite Lego Castle sets. And without further ado, let me get into the review. I will start off showing you guys the instruction manual. So here we have the front of the manual. The box art chair is the same as the front of the manual. Very well detailed, showcasing the fun. Here we have the back of the manual showing the win-win. Then we have our piece count. We have the Lego Club magazine. We have two sets released that year, which is the Trolls Fortress and the Kane's Carriage. Both I have owned those, I have both owned those sets. Then we have some of the play features that we'll show you later on. This set includes seven minifigures. We have three skeletons, one on horseback, one with a spear, and a black skeleton with a flail and a shield, one crowns knight, the queen, a jester, and the golden knight. Let's start with the skeleton on horseback. Here we have the complete minifigure on horseback holding his scythe. This set includes one dead horse or one skeletal horse. I love the inclusion of the horses in the castle theme, just a menacing looking figure. Here we have our Grim Reaper skeleton. This is just an ordinary white skeleton with a black hood and a black cape piece holding a scythe. He has a creepy face with red eyes. Here is his black cape and hood from behind. Next we have an ordinary white skeleton with a white spear. He is the exact same copy of the one with the Grim Reaper, just without the hood piece. He carries a black spear and he is just an ordinary skeleton from behind. For our third minifigure, we have a duplicate skeleton, but he is in a black color. He carries a flail and a circular skeletal shield. Here he is from behind. We have one ordinary Crown's Knight soldier carrying a silver sword. Under his helmet, he has a slight smirk with a orange eyebrows. His torso has two belts, a little crown symbol, and underneath that is chainmail. He comes with blue arms. His back torso is gray with no printing. Next, we have the Crown's Knight Queen. I apologize in advance, I am missing her crown. I can show you guys a picture in the top right corner of what it would look like if she had it on. She has quite the confident facial expressions with a slight smirk and down brows. She wears an elegant blue dress on her torso. She has that blue patterning. She has jewels all on her top of her chest and around her waist. She has a little necklace in the middle and she has some white patterning. And that same design follows into her uh, dress. She has gold patterning in between her legs and more of that white. The back of her torso continues that patterning with the jewels and the white. Her hair piece is braided up in some sort of fashion, I don't know. Next we have our goofy figure, the crowned jester. He has two facial expressions signifying the th symbol of theater. His first expression is the smiling face, followed by a crying face. He has an alternating blue and red cap with some bells on his side. His torso again has alternating red and blue coloring patterning. He has a collar with some bells on it, a little belt with the crowned symbol on it. His legs also carry that same blue and red color pattern. And this figure has no back printing, just the alternating color pattern. Quirky guy this is, I would say. Finally, we're on our prized figure, the Golden Knight. He carries a golden sword and a crowned knight shield. He has a little blue poof on the top of his helmet, and he has that really sought after helmet piece. His face shield opens up to reveal an old man. Our old man has a mustache and mutton chops, and it's all gray, with a kind of a cheeky looking smile. He wears an armor piece that goes over his torso. It has gold and steel plating with the nice big crown symbol in the middle of it. Underneath his armor, we have more armor, showing a case in some chain mail, more of that gold and steel plating, a belt to keep it all together, and that same pattern goes into his front of his legs with the uh, chain mail some bolts and he has little kneecaps. He is such a beautifully designed minifigure, one of my favorites I have in my collection. So glad to have him. Back of the torso continues with the belt patterning, some more bolts holding all of his steel together, plus some more chainmail. His back of his legs and arm printing have a silverish gold tint to it. His facial alone is worth about 30 to 40 dollars on Bricklink, which is crazy.
Now let's review the build itself. We will first start with the ramp leading up to the tower itself, including the moat at the bottom. The ramp allows our minifigures to elevate against and over the moat. It comes with a little bit of bush detailing on the side, and it comes with flame pieces as well to light their way to the top. Here is the wooden ramp. The ramp opens up to showcase a hidden compartment. You can use this compartment as storage, but I like to use it as a little prison for so many figures. The ramp is modular with the main build by just connecting with these two pins on the underside of the bridge. And I'm just having a little bit of trouble getting in there. There we go. And it is in now. There we go. Here we have the bridge connecting the ramp to the main structure itself. And along the sides, we have some green foliage along the corners of the build. And we have these two flag posts. The flag poles can articulate up and down, but the instruction says to have it at the angle I'm showcasing right now. Underneath the tower, we have a little cave system, quite the space we have down there. Here we have the entranceway to the main opening of the tower. The first floor is empty space. As we see, we have the fences on each side with crossbows, brown crossbows. On the box art, it shows the jester defending the bottom area. As we see, the interior has nothing but space for minifigures to stand in. And then we have this nice little greebling along the sides or pillars of the build with these gray, dark gray cheese wedges. Now transition to the second floor, we have two wooden axes crossed over underside the lion statue right there. And that piece can be found in the main castle from 2007. We have two windows, we have some blue detailing and more of those cheese wedges to have some greebling on it to look like stone foundations. And as you can see on the bottom, we have two chains coming from the main mechanism to allow the drawbridge to open up. We have two windows on the sides of the second floor, with one side having the queen looking out to see what's going on out there. For the main play feature, we have this little crank that allows the gearbox inside to rotate, which allows these columns to rotate and pulls up the chains. Then we have this little lever that locks the gear in place so the drawbridge does not go crashing down. Simply pull up the lever to free the drawbridge and just push the lever the other way for it to fall down. Here is the play feature and action. So we see it's pulling up, it goes up nice and slowly, nice and smoothly, and then eventually I will lock the mechanism so it doesn't fall down. The roof has more defenses. As we see, we have this main flick fire missile in the middle coming with two in reserve. We have these little gold uh, wedges on the sides just to show the wealth and power of the castle knights. And here I attempt to use the flick fire missile with one hand and beautiful, beautiful shot. That will conclude my review of the Lego Castle Drawbridge Defense. Overall, an amazing set for $39.99. You get seven minifigures, including great minifigures, like I said, the Golden Knight, the Queen, nice inclusion of Gesture, and a bunch of uh, enemy minifigures, and plus this little crown knight. The set is generally just beautiful looking, a great unique tower design. I love the drawbridge. I love the little drawbridge or the little roadway going up to the bridge. The nice little defenses on this tower, including flick fire missile. The drawbridge itself is really fun to play with and just looks really great on display. In my opinion, this is among the best of LEGO Castle line. Let me know what you guys think is the best, if this is great, and which other ones are better. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video. And also, if you want to see a review of the Escape the Dragon Prison, I will put an annotation on the top corner of the video. Without further ado, guys, that is the end of my video. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye bye.